How's 2018 shaping up for the two of you right now? For us, it's been incredibly hectic. Whether you're reaching your goals a little bit behind or maybe a lot behind, we're going to give you a leg up for this year. Today, we're going to cover how the two of you can get on the same page with money and push forward. Welcome to the Couple Money Podcast, the show where we share stories and advice on building up your marriage and wealth together. I'm Elle Martinez. Support for this podcast comes from Jumpstart Your Marriage and Your Money Masterclass. This course is designed to help you two get on the same page with money, dump your debt faster, and get you on the path to financial freedom. Sign up for the class today and get lifetime access. Just head over to couplemoney.com slash jumpstart. So we're in the what? Fourth week of January? Already it's been crazy for us. We started out the month getting notification that our car insurance and home insurance were going up. So I was hunting around to find a better deal with that. We did get that break that we needed to and we went down to Charleston as a couple. But right after that, we got the flu and we got it hard. And you probably noticed there was no new episode last week. That's because we were stuck in bed. Guys, this flu is no joke. I'm the type of person that if I get sick, I somehow find a way to clean the house a little bit extra. I know it's it's not a good habit to have. But I couldn't even get out of bed. It was horrible. So my apologies. I couldn't really put out an episode because I was just so sick. I didn't have my voice. And even though now most of the symptoms are gone, I'm still struggling with my voice. So this episode is going to be a little different than normal. But besides that, we got hit with an emergency. Our cat somehow got sick off of something he ate. We had to rush him to the hospital. Good news is he's on the mend, but between the hospital visit the medicine, the diagnostics, and everything else, we were hit with a $1,500 bill. And just today, I had to take the car in, my husband's car, and get two new tires. So January is just about over, but I feel like we've got a few months of experience and unfortunately expenses in this month. The good news is we're still going forward with our goals for the year. But that means we have to be in regular communication about what's changed. And so this weekend, we're going to relax a little bit and kind of review the numbers and see where we need to adjust for our goals. And I'm a huge fan of talking together about finances. But a common question I keep getting is how to get your spouse on board, how to get excited about it. And to be honest, it's the way you approach talking about money. Now, if you guys have listened to this podcast for a while or you've picked up my book, Jumpstart Your Marriage and Your Money, I get into not only why it's important to talk about money together, but into the how. And a big part of that is making sure you're asking the right questions. Sometimes I think we're tempted to go into the, okay, let's run the numbers mode or let's see what the problem is with our finances. And really, it's about, let's start out with what we want to do, where we're trying to go. Then we can see where we are and start building from there. Today, I want to help you guys out and give you a glimpse of how you can approach money together. Unfortunately, my voice is still struggling, so I can't sit down with my husband and talk. We're both under the weather. But I found someone who's incredibly knowledgeable and does a fantastic job with his own marriage about talking with money. I met Ryan last year at a conference and we immediately hit it off. He is passionate about helping physicians and their families get on solid financial footing. And this isn't a professional interest, it's also something personal. Ryan is married to Dr. Taylor Inman, a pediatric pulmonologist. And besides his financial practice, he has a fantastic podcast called The Financial Residency. And recently, He had an episode where his wife was over and they talked about finances together. 
and I immediately love listening to the episode. And so I asked him if I could play some snippets here on the podcast. And what's great about this is I know on this show, we can sometimes get deep into the weeds with the finances. The last episode we did was maximizing your 401k. But if you too want to talk about the big picture, your focus shouldn't necessarily be on just the steps, but really the outcome. What kind of life do you want to create together? And so their chat, I thought, gave a great glimpse on how the two of you can approach finances together. As you're listening to this, I'd love for you to do two things. One, think about the three questions that Ryan asked. They're very specific and they're in a very particular order. And the second is, notice how there's little, if any, mention of actual financial numbers. Ryan and his wife are talking about creating a life together and seeing where there's differences and how they can align their finances to meet their goals. And so this doesn't come across as a calculation exercise or an interview where Ryan's jotting down numbers, but this is a real conversation between the two of them. So I hope this inspires you as you go talking about finances. So you might be thinking, you know, what is a life plan? What is he talking about? Well, a life plan really allows you to clarify your most important priorities. It enables you to maintain a balance. And and you're going to hear in in the show that my wife and I have sacrificed some stuff for each other, but it allows us to maintain a more balanced life. It'll honestly, and it allows you to say no to more things. As soon as you figure out what you really want in life, everything else becomes a no and the things that actually matter become a yes. It's fascinating once you've get, gotten to that point of being able to say yes to things that really truly make you and your spouse happy. We're going to go over uh, the three questions, the three important questions, which were brought up to me by George Kinder, who's kind of the godfather of uh, life planning. And he didn't originate the questions, but this is how I originally found out through one of his talks. And it's something that I do with my clients over at Physician Wealth. And so it's one of the exercises that we do. And I thought it'd be kind of fun to do this uh, on a live recording. I'm surprised Taylor thought it'd be fun as well. But yeah, we're here. Yeah, are you ready to you ready to start? I am ready. Okay. So the first question is, imagine you're financially secure. You have enough money to take care of your needs, both now and in the future. How would you live your life? Would you change anything Let yourself go and describe your dreams. What would you do if money were no object? So I would love to live by the beach with a big yard, not a big house. I would like an average size house because I don't have to clean that big of a house, but just be comfortable with my family, live somewhere beautiful with great weather. Um, I'd want to spend as much time as possible with family. And our kids are little now, but they'll be starting school soon. So I know I'd like to travel with them to exotic fun places in the summer when they're on breaks and just teach them about life and culture. And I would like to work out every day and have a chef to cook healthy meals for me. I hate cooking, but I like to eat healthy. So that would be a big splurge for me. And then I still would want to work part-time, maybe one or two days a week or do volunteer work. And I've kind of had a taste of this not working uh, from moving to Las Vegas the first six to seven months that we were here, I wasn't working at all. And I had two little kids. I was studying for boards. There was a lot going on, but I still felt like I missed work. So I know that I would still like to work in some capacity. Uh, even if I had all the money in the world, I still get a lot of joy out of working. And I think part of that is going into pediatrics. It's fun. I get to play and act like a kid at work and it's a lot of fun. Yeah. So you kind of bring up like being active still in work, like if money were no object, like what would your ideal work week look like? Would it be every week? I think it would be every week while the kids were in school, like while while we were tied down to our home base. But I think I would like something that's flexible. So I said one to two days a week. So maybe in a practice that, you know, could allow to have someone just come in here and there. They wouldn't have to pay me much because money would be no object. Or I also uh, think that me- medical mission trips would be fun as well. Uh, especially if we could take the family and the kids somewhere different and help out. Yeah, I'd be I'd be interested in a medical mission. I mean, I wouldn't know what to do. I'd just be kind of like there for support and probably be the babysitter for the kids. But we'd be there to 
support that. I think that'd be fun. Yeah. So uh, is there anything else you'd want to add to question one? No, I feel like we talk about this question quite a bit. Like what would your ideal life look like? So I kind of feel like I'm living that now too, besides being financially secure. I mean, I'm having time with the kids. We have time together. We travel not as ex- as extravagantly as would be possible, but we still get to do a lot of the things that we want. So I feel like we're living a pretty good life. So I'll go ahead and, and kind of answer some of mine. So I really want to travel and I would travel a whole lot more than we do. And I would have a little bit better vacations than what we do and maybe stay a little bit nicer place or not have to worry about how much things cost. It wouldn't be like we go overboard and be at the Ritz or something, but, and then I'd, I'd like to go to several places. So, um, I'd like to go to the Great Barrier Reef. I know you've been, and I was really jealous and wish I could have gone. I'd love to go to China and Japan. That'd be a great trip. We both were very fortunate to go in college to Africa on a safari. And that was like the best trip that we've ever been on, at least in my mind. Do you agree or no? Uh, Yeah, hands down. It's the best trip that I've been on my life. It was so fun to just be out in Jeeps just around crazy, huge elephants, giraffes, lions, everything. I'd love to take our kids there and go on vacation and just spend a week or two in Africa. I'd like to go to the ice hotel in Sweden. It's like a full ice hotel, just like it sounds. I don't like cold. From Kansas. Yeah. Um, I'd like to go to Alaska and do like salmon fishing. I think that'd be super fun. I want to see an iceberg. I'm not gutsy enough to do like the scuba under the iceberg as you look at me with a terrible face. But yeah, there's people that do that and pay to do that, which seems painful. But I really do want to see an iceberg. And then I really want to see the sharks in South Africa, like jump out of the water and do one of those things. I don't think I'm crazy enough to get in the water uh, with the cage. I don't know, maybe, but I think that'd be amazing. And then like for the day-to-day stuff, I would still like to work and help people. I wouldn't be maybe as stressed and work you know, the six, seven days a week that I do work and do all that kind of stuff. I would still actually create a podcast because I actually really like doing the podcast. I think it's really fun. And so far feedback has been good. So I guess that's, that's good. And then the two other things I'd like to do is I'd actually like to be more active in real estate. We already are pretty active. We buy like a rental place a year now and I would want to keep active, but not for the profit side. I would actually want to build affordable housing for people in need and kind of manage that and help people out. Kind of like leaving a legacy that our kids could kind of live off of, you know, because in this this question, like it, it doesn't assume like you're Bill Gates, but it assumes like you are financially secure. So I'd rather, I'd like to use some of that to help it so that kids can kind of chase their dreams. You have any questions? Uh, I'll travel to all those places with you, except for I do not want to get in the water with sharks in Africa. That sounds awful. And you already are very active in real estate, but I think I like your idea of building affordable housing and helping people out when you are so fortunate. And I think that's a great idea. So switching up to question two. Question two is, now imagine that you visit the doctor, and I I get it, play along, because I know this doesn't really happen, but... She reveals to you that you only have five to 10 years left to live. You're never going to feel sick, but you'll have no notice of the moment of your death. What would you do in the time that you have remaining? Would you change your life? And if so, how would you change it? And quick note is that this question does not assume unlimited wealth. So for me, if I did only have five to 10 years left to live, I think I would stop working at that point just because you have an end. You're not going to live forever. You know, you don't have that much time. And I focus on spending time with my kids, with family, with friends. I would travel as much as possible and make memories. I mean, I still think I would travel. It wouldn't have to be as extravagant. I know there's not unlimited wealth, but I would live within my means so that I didn't have to work or worry about money and travel. You know, you could rent an RV and drive around the United States and have fun too, making memories together. On a side note, I would eat dessert with every meal and enjoy food a little more and just spend time enjoying what time I have left. So you would actually get in an RV and drive all around the United States? I think that would be really fun. Are you sure? What's wrong with it? I'm I'm saying it'd be fun, but we could like stop at every ballpark and like go see baseball games and 
I mean, we could do that. I didn't know. Actually, this is something I learned about you. I did not know that you would actually get in an RV and go drive around for well, a while. If I was going to die in five to 10 years and I wasn't working and I wanted to travel on a budget and make memories, that seems like the best way possible. Yeah, except for, I mean, thankfully you're not dying in five to 10 years, but I mean, we have no idea when any of us are going to die. And I mean, I'm not a doctor. I am married to one, but I'm not a doctor. I, I know that we're not going to live forever. So... I mean, who says we couldn't end up doing that? Summer vacation. Well, maybe when the kids are a little older, though, because one in three traveling <laughs> in an RV sounds awful. Just driving home from taking them to the aquarium today was nerve wracking with both meltdowns because it was dinner time. But you don't like screaming kids in an enclosed car? I didn't have earplugs. Oh, near did I. But that was like the most exciting thing ever. So, yeah, travel, stop work, and you'd eat dessert. With every meal, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Seriously? Breakfast too? Yep. Oh my gosh, you're crazy. Ryan, what would you do with your five to 10 years remaining? So I would stop working as much as I do. I know that I'm working quite a bit and I would enjoy more time with the kids and with you. And I would, and I still am, I'm actually am trying to do this is to like when we are spending time together to unplug and to not have the phone and not worry about emails and different things that come through. Sorry for the clients listening, but I am trying to unplug it, you know, certain times. And then I would say the two trips, like traveling would be important, but not that important. It's just two trips I would want to do is I'd want to go on a safari um, again, and then I'd want to go to the Great Barrier Reef. That would be the two trips in that five to 10 year time span that I think would be really fun and really important to do those if I had five to 10 years left. So Yes, I agree. I would live with you in Hawaii and travel to the Great Barrier Reef and on an African safari. Oh, oh, thanks. I guess you would tolerate me for, what, the 6 to 12 months that we go live in Hawaii, huh? Yes, and I would support your video blogging as well. And then um, you also touched on working from home and being able to help out with the kids. It is nice having you work from home because when they are both melting down and it's the end of the world, you can't work because they're screaming so loud that you can't talk to clients, you can't record podcasts, you do have to come and help. So that's really nice about having you at home if you look at it in a beneficial way. All right, so let's go to question three. So question three, and I know when I do this with clients and I know already what you're going to say, you're going to hate this question, but finally, imagine that your doctor shocks you with the news that you only have 24 hours left to live. Nothing can be done. What feelings arise as you confront your own mortality? What did, what did you miss? What did you not get to be? What did you not get to do? I don't like this question. I don't Reselect. like talking about it. But in all honesty, I just, I would feel like I got to miss out on being a mom and a wife and I would miss watching my kids grow up and just miss out on important life events and everyday activities. I don't think there's anything that I would be worried about not getting to do. I just missing out on my family and not being there for them. So uh, family is the most important thing to me. And I think this question helps you realize that, but I still don't like thinking about it. Yeah, I mean, no one likes thinking about it. And the good news is you're not dying in 24 hours, so neither am I, and hopefully no one listening. But yeah, family's the most important. I talk about family like in every podcast and in a lot of blog posts, and I mean, it's always top of mind to me. So family is extremely important. And, you know, to answer this question for myself, I didn't get to see my kids grow up. That would be that would be a tough one. I didn't get to go grow old with you. I want to see what you look like old. Uh, I'd, I'd be sad that we didn't get to do all the fun things that we want to do and see the experiences that we want to see and nothing material. Like I don't care about any of that. It would be the experiences that I'd be missing doing those things with you and the kids and, you know, walking my daughter down the aisle. That would, that's going to be obviously a big day. Um, hopefully when she's 35, is that good? <laughs> <laughs> she's going to kill me when she hears this, if she hears this. But yeah, those are the those are the things I'd really miss. It wouldn't be anything else, really. I hope you enjoyed that chat as much as I did. After the episode, I had messaged Ryan because I had a few questions. And one of the big ones was, why did those particular questions work so well with getting people to open up, not just about maybe their goals, but the life that they're trying to work towards? 
And Ryan was kind enough to share what he picked up during his training. Yeah, the first question is like all the material. It's like first question is like all material stuff, right? It's like you have you have unlimited wealth. What would you do? Well, here comes all the material stuff that you've always wanted. And then the second question is like, well, you don't have unlimited wealth, but now we're restricting the amount of time you have for five to ten years. Then what is it? And it's like, oh, well, a lot of that material stuff doesn't matter. Like it's the experiences. And then, and so usually question two is all around experiences and, and things. And then the third question is, okay, like you have no time and no money and you've got one day like reflecting back, you know, what was it that you missed? What did you not get to become? And then that's where the real stuff comes out. Like what is the most important thing? So it does funnel you down into that. Special thanks to both Ryan and Taylor for being a part of the show. Please check out Financial Residency. It's a great podcast and Physician Wealth Services if you think Ryan can help you guys out in your particular situation. He is really dedicated to helping physicians and their families get squared away with finances. As always, I have all the info and details in the show notes, including links, resources, and those questions to get you guys started with talking about money. Just head over to couplemoney.com slash three questions. And speaking of questions, next week we're doing a special episode. We're doing a reader listener mailbag. So if you have a question about marriage and money, send them in. Right now on the table, we're going to be talking about loaning money to in-laws, negotiating on insurance bills, and if those high deductible health plans are really such a good deal. If you want to stay on top of the podcast, get all the videos, articles, make sure you're subscribed to the Couple Money community. I send out weekly updates with everything we release as well as some behind the scenes and exclusive stuff. And yep, it's all free. Just go to couplemoney.com slash join. Our theme song was written and performed by Gentle Regime. Additional music by Lee Rosevear and Music for Makers. And if you enjoyed this episode, could you do me a favor? I'd love to get the message out for couples to start getting on the same page, dumping debt, and building wealth together. So if you could share, like, tweet this episode, I would be so grateful. I hope you have a wonderful week. Take care.